It's Eddie Hearn who joins us this morning. Eddie, how are you? How are you good doing? Good morning, Eddie. Yeah, I'm good. I'm in, I'm in sunny Leeds, ready to go. The way in in a few hours and hopefully they keep their hands off each other when we've got a fight tomorrow night. Oh, crikey. Well, it's not only that. I mean, th- these two have the gift of the gab by the sound of it. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's a real hatred, you know. I mean, the first fight was very controversial. You know, a lot of people feel that Jack Cattrall should have been undisputed world champion that Mm. night. And for the last two years, everyone's been talking about it. It's got quite personal between everybody, you know, the fighters, even their families and stuff like that across social media. So tomorrow night, we put it right. 11,000 crammed into Leeds. It's going to be a massive night. British fight of the year so far over here. And looking forward to it. I think we'll have a great fight. Eddie, you've seen some fighters um, in your time but and some fights, but is this the one fight where both boxers, like you just says, really hate each other? <laughs> really yeah, hate like, each other? We've done, you know, Frotch Groves, Bellew Cleverly. Um, you know, you've seen the likes of Brooke Kahn. Yes. Um, Quig Frampton was a good example. Like, this is the first one where they actually want to attack each other on oh, wow. site. And, and, you know, people say, oh, he's talking it up again. Honestly, like, when these two come together face to face, they just want to grab each other around the throat. We've seen it in the build up, yeah. you know, in the press conferences. So now sometimes, you know, yesterday was a little bit more chilled at the press conference because I think the coaches just say, look, save your energy. You're going to have a 12 round war on Saturday night. So be ready. But, you know, the, the great thing about boxing, Gabby, and, and some people don't get it, is after the fight, and this is why people think that sometimes, yeah, it's a bit WWE, the respect's there. You know, you saw it between Fury and Usyk yes. last week. You can say what you want, but after the fact, after the battle, hands are shaken and and the respect is there. So I I don't, you know, these guys say, no, there won't be, but you you will see it in Leeds. You know, I think there'll always be a respect between fighters, but certainly this one is, you know, the the title of the fight is hate runs deep. And and it's fact, you know, these guys don't like each other. Look, it helps sell the fight. Of course it does. It creates a narrative and people want to tune in and, and they'll do that Saturday night. You said that then in the press conference that perhaps their corners were sort of saying, you know, save your energy for the fight and everything like that. But when it comes to the weigh-in and when they're both standing there face to face, that's sometimes when you really get that sort of the needle comes through. Does that mean you've got to have more security for these two? Yeah, I mean, luckily, <laughs> down at 140 pounds, I can jump in the middle. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I'm, a, I'm like, I couldn't pump. You're the heavy man, I get a wet you. paper bag. But at light welterweight, I'm I'm a big enough lump to jump in and maybe take one myself. But once they move up to light like, like heavyweight and cruiserweight, I have to say to the security <laughs> lads, get in quick, you know. But I think this is actually where they're at, they're at their most volatile. Don't forget, these guys are bringing themselves down to weight, right? Mm-hmm. So after the press conference last night, they'll be training. They won't eat too much. You know, they'll be cutting fluids. So today at the weigh-in at one o'clock, they'll be, they'll be ratty. You know, and that they will come together, and I'm sure there'll be a little bit of action. But you know, we've got everybody on hand to make sure. I always say to the guys, like, keep your hands to yourself. You know, let's let's stand there, let's look into each other's eyes, say what you want, but you know, let's make sure we make it into the ring tomorrow. Good use of the word ratty, by the way. <laughs> Love that old school ratty, Eddie. <laughs> I'm far from a boxing expert, but I was watching the fight on Saturday. Fury, you sick with some friends? I couldn't believe it, mate. How Usyk was just coming forward and coming forward. Uh-huh. Energy. Yeah. Like, he didn't like he was tired. Mm. How good was he against um, Fury was for you, mate? You know, I mean, the whole event was incredible. And, and you know, sitting up close was was one of the, the great nights for boxing. You know, firstly, so happy that we got an undisputed heavyweight world championship. And secondly, that it delivered. And it's great for all of us who work in the sport. You know, I think... Usyk was incredible. You know, I scored the fight. Everyone had different kind of opinions. Some people thought it was quite close after six rounds. I actually had Fury up. You know, I thought he was looking really good. And Usyk at times looked like, for me, like almost like a sort of kid trying to get to his dad. You know, he was Mm. like jumping. He wouldn't leave him alone. And he, but I didn't think that physically he could get to him. And and what's incredible about Usyk is, don't forget, this guy is at such a disadvantage with his size. Yes. You know, he's like three stone plus less, you know, smaller than these guys. And physically, he was dominating Usyk. So, you know, to come up from Cruiserweight, obviously undisputed there, and then to become undisputed heavyweight world champion, to beat AJ, to beat Tyson Fury. I mean, he goes down as one of the, the, the greats of our generation. And, you know, I see the stuff with what Frank Warren and Simon Jordan mm. on Tyson Fury. 
you know, we haven't always got eye, on eye to eye, but I, I, I think we should give him respect. You know, like he fought his heart out. He mm. showed tremendous heart in the ninth round. Well, I was going to yeah, yeah, ask you about that. Do you think, it, I mean, why do you think the referee sort of allowed him that time? And why did he let Usyk finish you know him what off? It is? I think that it's, it's the referee, right? His priority is to make sure in his mind that the fighter is safe to continue, Yeah. right? So he's not thinking, oh, I need to get these two back together as quickly as possible so Usyk can finish him off. He's saying, I need to make the right decision here. Mm. I think he was a bit slow. I don't mind the call about the the count mm. because, you know, under the rules, if the ropes are holding you up, the referee can take a count. And there's no doubt that the ropes were holding Fury up in that last exchange, right? So yeah. that's okay. But from then, you know, he brings him forward. Then he looks in his eyes. Then he tells him to move to the left, to move to the right. This is all standard procedure, mm. but it does take quite a long time. And, you know, if Usyk would have had another 10 seconds, Maybe yeah. the ref would have finally jumped in. But at that point, the ref has got to make a decision whether, whether you know, from a safety perspective, from a, from a health perspective, yeah. Fury is okay to continue. You know, I, I don't think the ref did a, a bad job in all uh -huh. honesty. I think it's a very difficult situation. But, you know, I couldn't believe the way that Fury recovered coming out for the 10th because when he went back to his stall at the end of the 9th, everybody sitting on that my row, you know, just said, it's over. The fight's over. So, you know, he's got he's got great heart. And, you know, I know he said some things in the past that people won't like. And, you know, I'm one of those people. But watching that in the heat of battle, mm. I mean, you know, to, to, you know, he was out. He was yeah. gone. He, there, well, there, wasn't, there wasn't a centimetre of the ring during that last exchange in the ninth that he didn't cover. But he showed he heart, didn't he, about, Eddie, like, to stay on his feet? Do you know, like, to not course, go down as well? Tremendous heart. Tremendous heart. I don't know how he didn't go down, you know, but... <laughs> Usyk is, you know, he's a special, special fighter. Mm. When you talk about the heat of the battle, I know you've been involved in a few battles oh. with our very own Simon Jordan. Did oh. you hear his battle with Frank Warren? <laughs> yeah, I did. Who yeah, won it, I, I don't know. I haven't, I've just, you know, you hear the, you see the clips and you yeah. see the clickbait and stuff like that. I think that the problem is, is, you know, I said in an interview this week, I feel like sometimes in, in our country, we're a little bit of like, I call it like a ha-ha merchant. You know, so like when you lose, it's like, ha ha, mm. you lost. And like, there, there's people in our, like, there's people who want people to lose. And I don't know, maybe I'm getting a little bit soft in my old age, but I, I like to see people win. And I, even people, like, I've never really got on with Tyson Fury. Like, I respect him. I don't think he particularly likes me. And this would be a great opportunity for me to jump on him and yes. say, yeah, he said this, mm. he said that. Mm. We, as promoters, as media, are putting these fighters, you know, under the, the limelight to promote the fight, right? So Tyson's job is to talk up the fight, to say this. He says some silly things sometimes, but he's a character. He's an entertainer. And at the same time, we use his sound bites when we're selling the fight. And then after, we, we, we try, you can't hold it against him. You know, like obviously Tyson Fury and TalkSport have had this backwards and forwards. He feels like you guys are giving him a tough time. He's banned you from covering his fights which mm. i don't think is always the best decision because sometimes mm. it, you guys have like doubled down and what it is is when you get beat all of that stuff in the past got, got, gets regurgitated and then these people you know these ha-ha merchants say ha-ha you lost and for me knowing boxers and knowing what they go through and knowing, seeing the heart that he showed in the ninth round yes. i'd rather even as it's tyson fury say respect to you you gave us one of the great fights we've seen you never quit. There's not many that could do what you did. There's not many that could tough it out like you did. So regardless of what you said, regardless of how you built up the fight, respect to you. You're a great heavyweight as well. And we move on. But, you know, the problem is, is if you if you make it fear, fearsome when you lose, or people won't want to take the chances. So all the criticism you get when you lose, people are afraid to roll the dice sometimes. You know, I saw it with AJ. I couldn't believe after he lost to Ruiz how things changed. You know, from the media, from the public. It was like, mm -hmm. oh, you actually, oh, you got embarrassed you did at Madison Square. Go, well, what about when you beat Klitschko in front of 90,000 at Wembley and got up off the deck to win the World Heavyweight Championship? Like, we're, we're very quick to forget. And I feel like sometimes we, we don't promote greatness as yes. much as we should in this country. And the elite level of the sport It's more of a, you want people to get up there. And then when you get there, Mm. you want to bring him down. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's that's not a great look. And it's, it's, like, it's like Frank Bruno. Frank Bruno was like the most popular fighter this country's ever seen. 
when he won the World Heavyweight Championship, it was almost like, oh, he's won the World Heavyweight Championship. He, he, he actually dipped in popularity, you know? <laughs> it's like, so we, we kind of like, we want you to be good, but we don't want you to be too good. And yeah. you know, I think we should be showing people, you know, a bit more credit and respect, regardless of what they said. What do you, what do you want Tyson Fury to be? You want him to be an entertainer? You want him to push the sport, be a great self-promoter? You know, I tell you most weeks, this guy's going to win. And then when he doesn't win, it's like, you're yeah, right. Yeah. But that's <laughs> just our job. It's our enthusiasm for the sport. So, Well, it you know, is the but, um, build them up to knock them down mentality, yeah. isn't yeah, that's it? Because, we do you know, that's the bit like the mentality yeah. in, in our country. But it, we're yeah. British. We're, you know, we're, we're old school and sometimes we do that. But I feel like we should be you know, pushing people on to say, good on you. Well, in your words, Eddie, you've got two ratty boxers to look after at the weigh-in today. <laughs> so uh, best of luck for the fight this weekend. Cheers, Eddie. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Eddie. Top mum. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.